Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and today we're starting a new series on the game Banished using the Colonial Charter mod, version 1.6. This just came out, appropriately called The Forge Awakens. Um, it's only running at this point in a beta version, you know, the new upgraded version of Banished 1.0.5. If you uh, want to give this a try, it's not... Uh, out to the general public through Steam yet because things are still in beta, but you can go to uh, your Steam account if, if you've got Banished there, right click on Banished, go to Properties and go to Betas and choose the 1.05 version. Download that. Then you can go over to ColonialCharter.com and I'm sure there's a link there, pretty obvious, uh, how to download the mod and instructions and where to, to unzip it to within the Banish game so the Banish will recognize it as a mod. From what I understand, this newer version of Banish mostly changes things under the hood to allow for more in-depth modding, now allowing more like more levels of uh, supply chain for example. Iron now starts as iron ore, which, which I thought was really exciting, which then has to be smelted into iron ingots before you can use it the way we used to just use generic iron. So it makes for a deeper colony building experience, which takes what's already a great colony building game to the next level, or what uh, kind of feels like Banish 2.0. So we're going to start a brand new game. And this one I'm going to pick my own name. I'm thinking Ramblington. How does that sound? Noble Ramblington. And I don't have a map seed picked out. We'll just kind of randomize it and see what comes in. Um, oh, what do we have? Lots of choices. A lot of new choices in here as well from before. I kind of like the Verdant Plains. It's uh, Last time we went through Banish, I accidentally chose mountains, and that was a bit of a challenge. It was, it was very doable, but it didn't give me the freedom to, to build wherever I wanted to. The plains, the Verdant Plains uses a lot more yellows in the map instead of the greens. So a little bit different look to it. Terrain size, I'm going to go with large. I, I don't want to... Now a small or medium works good for a quick little tutorial let's play, but I want to be able to uh, to expand this and take the game just as far as I want to go with it. In fact, I think I'll go with very large, just in case. I don't know, I don't really have any goals for this let's play at this point. just want to jump in and see all the new things in there and We'll probably create goals as we go, as we get uh, you know feedback from from different uh, subscribers and viewers. Climate, you can go from mild to harsh. You can go very mild or very harsh. Or there's a whole bunch of other ones that they've thrown in. I'm thinking just a medium ground. We'll go with fair on this one. Disasters, that's kind of a roll of the dice. On makes for some exciting gameplay, but it can also completely destroy your town. I was playing one the other day in the uh, was it version 1.55 just before this one came out and it was going great i had a nice little town going i was kind of practicing the uh, the colonial charter mod and suddenly i had my speakers up loud and it just started going boom 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 and real loud noises and i hit pause i looked down to see these little red cross marks all over the bottom of the screen like it's just you know, death after death after death, and I moved the map around to find that a tornado dropped right into the center of town and just wiped out everything. When I was done, there were there were a couple of adults and three kids left. <laughs> There's no recovering from that. So it's not like it's not realistic. I mean, those we've seen, you know, in, in the last many years, whole towns being wiped out by, by tornadoes. So it's, it's, it's realistic. It's just, do you want to do that to a Let's Play series? But yeah, for the excitement of it, let's go ahead. We'll turn them on and just see what the game throws at us. Starting conditions. Charter, uh, Colonial Charter has a lot of, of scenarios that they've created and I haven't had a chance to, to play with a lot of these. I'm mostly, I've spent most of my time with just Vanilla Banished, and I usually start on Hard, which gives you four families and a little bit of clothing, food, firewood, and tools, and that's about it. Um, it's also kind of fun to start on Easy, just so that you can immediately get a little town going and just start having fun with it. Get some orchards and, and uh, uh, crops going, and you get a, a random animal uh, thrown in there. 
I was watching uh, Night Ghost 49 playing today, and he jumped into Old Castle Hard. And that was really interesting. Starts off with a, oh, like an old fort that the game is programmed to use as both a stockpile and a storage barn. And the capacity was like several storage barns and several stockpiles. You know, he played for, for 40 minutes and all of that production still, it said 0% filled. So there's a huge volume that it can handle. And it, it was kind of interesting. Um, I did notice that you start off with clothes, tools, and firewood. Doesn't say you start off with iron. Go to easy. And does it say? Just says building materials. Okay. So I guess they don't actually say iron. Um, when I started off, oh, let's see. Last night, as I was experimenting with, experimenting with it, I went with easy, and it did give me 50 iron. That isn't as much of an issue until you go to build your first tools and find that you have no iron to build them with. There is a grade of tools that is below this, uh, like rough tools or something like that, crude tools, that uses iron ore. But we'll get into that here real soon. Let me get a game started. I'm just trying to decide where I'm going here. Medium does what? Gives you food, firewood, tools, construction materials, uh, storage barns already been built, some seeds for fields and orchards are available. Hmm. Well, if I was starting at running full speed, I would go with easy. Taking my time, pausing it and getting it just right, I'd go with hard. I don't know what medium plus is. It's a clo uh, colonial charter version. What is this? Adds livestock. So medium-based game begins with five families. Clothing, food, firewood, tools, construction materials are provided. Storage barn has been built. Some seeds for fields and orchards are available, as well as herds of livestock. What's the difference between that and easy? I don't know. I think I'll just go with hard. I think we'll do that. Make it a little bit challenging. But, uh, you know, my play style is, is, is not at, uh, you know, full speed uh, type A personality. I slow it down and take my time and, and just enjoy it. So we can go with a, a more difficult setting and still be comfortable and knowing we're going to survive the first year. So let's go with this one. Anything else? Any surprises? Last time I was certain that I clicked valleys and I ended up getting mountains, but that's what I want. These seem to be all correct. Okay, let's do it. So Colonial Charter sets up a new um, uh, basis. You're not so much banished. You are explorers from your from your country. You know your country has rested all of their colonial ambitions on your venture. Your job is to ensure the survival of your country's citizens. So a little different uh, uh, take on the idea, whereas uh, Vanilla Banish was more of a, you know, you've been kicked out of your country, you're roaming the woods, and you've got to kind of start over again. So here we are colonists, in a sense. And from what I have watched on uh, Colonial Charter's uh, Let's Plays and, and uh, you know, talk from their, their forums, it's kind of a like a 1600s to 1700s time frame. So they base a lot of their building uh, architecture and, and their uh, resources around that. So let's see what our map looks like. Wow. Where do we go? Let's get the little map up. Where's that here? Yeah. We do have three good lakes. Okay. So it, it looked like uh, it was kind of kind of boring there. No water. But we're just away from the water. We may have to uh, do some moving before we... Uh, yeah, I'm just checking everything out here. What is the plan? I think we start where they are, using this as a forest node, but possibly building south of it. So we can get ourselves down a little closer to water. So... Starting point here is difficult not starting right where your cart is because they spend so much time walking over to get a meal when you're trying to build your town over here. But we'll work with this. Well, we know we, we need to get logs and food and whatnot going. Now this mod has reworked itself so that 
things are very heavily wood based. So you're going to need a lot more logs than you're used to. Um, in order to make the iron you've got to smelt it with furnace fuel which comes from either firewood or coal or other things. So a, it's pretty pretty heavy on the, uh, the need for logs. So we want to get, let's see, if you're used to vanilla banished, everything is different here. So forest and lodging is down here. So this is the forester. Let's see, what is our orientation? I like that. Gives us a road aiming down toward where we're going to be going over here. So we'll go in this orientation. Now we'll grab as many trees as are already there as little replanting as possible to get going. So we'll pop that into there. You know, let's get the rest of the uh, the UI up and going. There, there, and I like this one. So move that over. I usually put this at the bottom. This in the corner. Right there. So Ramlington. 13 citizens right now. All homeless. Some of those are kids. So we've got eight laborers, eight adults right now. So we'll immediately set at least two of them as builders. Well, we'll set half of them as builders. They're going to act as laborers until there's something to build anyway. So we've got our forester here. Let's get the gatherer going. So food and this one, raw food gathering. And one of the choices is the gatherer, which really... Well, it was in the vanilla. I'm assuming in this one as well. It is still the strongest method of uh, gathering food as far as how many resources an individual um, uh, settler can, can bring in. I'm going to go down here with him. Okay, so, and I always grab these and set them aside so I can keep track of them. Choose which ones I want to build first. Um, we're going to want an herbalist in here. We're going to want a, uh, a hunter in here. So right alongside the gatherer is the hunting cabin. <clears throat> and I'm looking at the, the yellow circle around there. I almost reached up and pointed at my screen for you. <laughs> One of these days I might start running these games with a camera, but right now I'm still just running the microphone. kind of want to get further down in here, but it's kind of nice having them both kind of huddled around the same road. So we'll do that. I usually spread them out a little bit so I can put have a little flexibility in between for my roads. Herbalist. That is in town services under health and healing. That is right there along with your hospital and, and an apothecary. And you see the apothecary requires, looks like, lumber. So you've got more building materials in this game than you do... Uh, uh, vanilla banished. You've got uh, lumber and, and bricks and glass and things like that. So there's so many more levels to this than, than uh, we'll say is Banish 1.0. So the herbalist, I forgot the hunting cabin, and I usually drop them in the order that I put them on the map, because that's the, the order that your colonists are going to want to go to unless you direct them otherwise. Alright, we're going to throw a road into here and eventually out of here. New road type that I noticed. Country road. So it's like a dirt road, except that it's covered in fallen leaves, so it would look good in a forest setting. So we're going to do that. And let's go a little bit further, and then click and hold the shift button and take this up diagonally into here. Okay, that left me a little bit of space here before the diagonal, because there's a couple other things I want to put in here. Let's grab storage, and there is a, what I call the shed, a little small storage barn. And we don't need a full-blown storage barn in here, more of a temporary place for your gatherers to drop things off before the eventually the marketplaces will come and get it. So let's go there with storage, and then stockpile. Lots of choices here too, you've got your generic stockpile, then you've got logs and firewood you can you can specify exactly what you want on the stockpile what is this one materials so used to store materials so I haven't gotten into that before so more of a generic one like this but specifically which materials I'm not sure we're gonna go generic on this one and that road diagonals down that runs through here 
So this building starts there. I'm going to put one space between. Take it to the road and go there. And something like a... Oh, that looks pretty good right there. Six by five. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our four main sources. We've got access in. We've got both kinds of storage. Um, a place to live might be kind of good in here so that these folks don't have to walk so far to wherever you know. <clears throat> That might be our way of getting from here to here. How about we build housing in here for everybody? Let them work it, do what they need to do, and then as we expand, we'll expand down this direction. Because we're needing so much more wood to keep this economy functioning, I'm going to put probably three forest nodes in here so that all three are constantly supplying whatever we're going to do maybe here for a, a first city rather than trying to get so far south it will grow into this area but I think this would be a probably a pretty good place for our first we'll call the town before we start building the city that's right WASD moves this map around that makes it easier than side scrolling <clears throat> okay so let's turn these guys on stop talking um, space on pauses. They're moving. They got plenty to do. They've been assigned. What am I missing? I can kick this up to five if I know that I've got it pretty well figured out. I think I do. Let's prioritize. Let's get the stockpile working first. Do that, and then we want to get Gatherer's Hut going after that. So we'll prioritize this one. Then that one. Oh, that one's done. Good. So the last thing you prioritize is what they work first and they work backwards. And unlike the last series I did on Banished, my little test uh, game that I did last night, they obeyed every time that I, I prioritized for them to do something. I was very impressed. Like they've reworked that mechanic a little bit in, uh, in this update as far as uh, the update that Banished is doing. All right, so I'm going to slow it down. Reserve of logs is low. That's what I missed. <clears throat> That's why I don't like running games on fast till I'm real comfortable. I've got everything right. We didn't queue up more materials for them to use or for them to, to, to gather. So let's head over here. We know we're going to want to get rid of all of the stone and, and iron in here so we can plant trees. What I don't know is if <clears throat> I log queue this up first will they not get into what I do second until they've taken care of the first so let's do kind of a mix let's grab some of the trees out here outside of our forest node let's grab some of the iron and ore that combine them here which is really nice yeah let's see let's they're based over here we're working over here let's kind of grab everything in between like there there as far as getting stone and iron got trees out of here um, could be quite a walk to drop off at the stockpile each time but I'm sure that they will have this road done real quick so that shouldn't be a problem all right so now they've got some raw materials to grab from so they can start building this one we just did a save or something a little lag there So the Forester was the first one built, so they naturally wanted to work on this first until I told them to work on this one. That's why so many logs and stone had already been dropped off over here. But this one's full now, and we've got three builders working on it. Not a lot of firewood at the moment. Okay, housing. That's right. I want to get that laid out. So while they're working on these... <clears throat> um, Let's give them a set of priorities we want. This one is the herbs. That's the last one we want done. So we want this one, that one, and that one. Actually, we just got it done. Great. Let's get two gatherers working. And they will start gathering foods from the forest and dropping it into the storage barn. That's right. So, let's see. We may as well get this one done. So we've got... Uh, almost all the materials there but we need to get this guy going so that the gatherers aren't going all the way back here each trip 
So, let's see. Prioritize. Reserve of logs is low. Yep. Let's get the forester going, which was here. And then this one. Actually, reverse that. There and there. So they should finish this one, then walk over and get this one done. That is the... That's the herbalist? Ah, that's the hunting cabin. Anyway, we're going to work on these guys here. So while they're doing that, let's continue the road. And we'll continue using the forest road. Um, where are we heading? Are we diagonaling? <clears throat> no, we're going across the river. Okay. So let's forest road out a little bit further. And then we'll take this diagonal this direction. Something like that. And get us out of the forest again. And right in here might be a good place to drop four houses. What I've been hearing, the log cabin, better warmth and comfort than a wooden home, right? So the log cabin uses less firewood. So let's go ahead and drop four of those in real quick. So, space away and a space out. And then a couple spaces apart. There's no real crunch for space inside here. Whatever space isn't used is going to be filled with trees anyway. Let's put the houses along the top of the screen to remind us that they're here. The builders are going to be building the road because they really like to build roads. The laborers are going to be taking out the stone that's in the way, and that's fine, we need stone. How are we doing on that anyway? Yeah, we need building materials. So let's more laborers than builders. Well, I guess, again, it doesn't matter. When they're not building, they are laboring. So it's the same. This one is finished. I can't, I can't grab it. So let's turn that one off. Declutter things. They're working on the road, and they're working on the small barn, which desperately needs building materials. Let's kick our speed back up. time in case building the roads change the priorities. Let's remind them that that one is important. We are in late spring. Now if this was an easy build, an easy uh, uh, game instead of hard, and we had seed and animals and you know, seed for orchard crops, then I would have immediately up here probably popped in two crop fields. If you could, you know, if you're into spring, then it may as well first thing get a couple of crops in. That way, you've kind of guaranteed a big burst of food for the winter time. Which we are doing what now? Are we eating? No, we're just all heading this direction. Oh, okay. For some reason, they they satisfied the road, and they need building materials, so they all took off to start taking out uh, materials. Okay, we've got a storage barn, or what I call the shed mostly built and we're finished. Small barn. Okay. And it's still screaming at us. We need logs, we need stone, we need everything, and boy we do. You know, there is something to be said about pausing everything, giving them, you know, a part you know, a tick of a season here to just gather materials. That way they are not going out chipping away two stones, walking back, dropping it off, going back, doing it again, but they're actually bringing in full loads and then moving those full loads in. Let's do that. Let's just hit pause on everything till late summer. See just what that does for us. Is there anything else that we've built that we've not designated? I think everything is on the screen. Okay. So let's let everyone, that one was being built, actually all the materials are there, let's go ahead and turn that on. A couple of builders will dive in there and do that work. Everyone else should be out dropping trees and chipping up uh, stone and iron and bringing it all to the stockpile. So we should see this stockpile start to grow quickly. It's also 
Oh, that's right. I have to remember this myself. We don't have any iron, because iron doesn't exist yet. We only have iron ore, and we have lots of that. So we've still got to melt all that iron ore down. We've got summertime now, into usable iron. So we've got... We have a lot of trees in here. Let's not hire a forester just yet. <clears throat> Let's continue to get their labor building up our materials. We need lots of stone. In fact, we do need lots of stone. Let's hold off on all of this iron right now. My map's at an angle. That's why I can't drag diagonally and catch all this stuff. Okay, so let's... That's strange. There's some red. Okay, so let's make sure that we've designated just stone get lots of that coming in rather than spending so much time working on iron that we're not really going to need just yet. So we're into summer. We've got 13 stone stored. We need, that'll do the hunting cabin, the herbalist, which we're not going to turn on for a while. We need eight for each of these, so another 32. And what did I say? So 48 stone is what we need to really get going on that. Logs, 30, 60, 90, 120, we're pretty well satisfied here. So 120 logs. Let's give them more logs to choose from. I'm thinking we've already hit our limit there. So you guys can take out some over in this area, some over in here, and some over in here. There we go. So we're good on stone. Let's go ahead and get them started. So back to the hunting cabin, back to the houses. Some will continue taking out materials, others will start hauling things to the job sites. The builders will begin building whatever has all the materials there and ready to go. So that's looking good. We're at early autumn now. If we get just one house going and firewood in it, then all of them will be able to go to that house for warmth. So we're not going to freeze to death through the winter. So it's good to have, just, if nothing else, just one house up and going by the time that snow hits, which actually is really soon. How are we doing on houses? This is our first one. Let's make sure that this does get going. So, turn you back on and let's prioritize this guy. Okay, there is our hunter. Hunters? Yeah, hunters. Again, let's wait a little bit longer. Keep the, uh, the labor up and running. We're going to need firewood soon, which we'll take out toward this end. Well, the stockpile's here, though. Okay, we'll put them right in here. While that's building, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, firewood, got to think here. That is now in refined resources. Let me pause it right here. Too much happening at once. Here's a new feature that I've never seen before, so I'm assuming that it is new to this, uh, this version. The log cabin will upgrade to a large log cabin, and it, the game will now show you all of the upgrades available for each building. Any of these have upgrades? None of these do. So when you get into like the bigger storage barn, it'll show you the much larger storage uh, building available underneath it, and it'll show you what it needs to build it. So this one needs... what is that symbol? We have 42 logs, 12 stone... I'm not sure. We'll find out. So that's one of the new features. They're going to start filling up their log cabin. And we now have the ability to survive the winter. So let's continue this. I wanted, that's right, resources, refined production, and woodcutter. There it is. There is a regular woodcutter that we're used to, and there is a chopper, which is a small version of it. So what I've noticed is that the chopper, um, let me turn this around here, he does about a third to a half of the volume that the woodcutter does. 
So the woodcutter is definitely uh, important as far as as uh, quantity, but it, it the wood chopper uses less space, so you can you know pop one in here and there somewhere around your map wherever you need a little boost. The firewood over by some houses that are that are off in the distance, and and you just want to fill a little stockpile over there and don't want them to have to walk all the way into the market to get it. So we got this coming in, which is important. Log cabin, good. So we're slowly starting to house our people, and they're grabbing all of the fuel. So they're going to grab all the food here real quick, too. In fact, food is going to be an issue. The house is cold, but the people aren't, so don't worry about that just yet. But let's make sure we do have plenty of food to get through the winter. Let's take us down to one builder, well, two builders for now. We're going to need to get a forester going soon. We're going to need to get the hunting going soon. I'm going to just pop in one hunter, and I'll wait till the wood cutter gets built, and then we'll pop in one uh, uh, forester as well, and then a wood cutter, and that'll pretty much satisfy us until some of our kids. What's that? More logs low. Yep. So some of the kids, five-year-old, six. So there's a nine-year-old, come of of an age where they can take a job and start uh, start working. This one needs one more log. We're out of logs. Okay. So, I'm going to hit a pause there. It's a little, you know, I want to I want to micromanage the beginning a little bit. Where do we want to take more logs? I'm I'm one that doesn't like to clear cut a whole screen. Just don't like doing that. So, because once you completely clear an area out, it doesn't grow back. You've got to place a forester and have them start planting to get it back. So let's grab trees, get out of the center of that. I'll grab some out of there. And yeah, should be no problem with them to do a little walking. Take out a section. I'm not liking that. Let's turn this there. Now I can grab a big square. I didn't do that before. So they'll go grab some logs. They're not going to need much to get this finished. The woodcutter is going to need some, though. Okay. I guess I need to pick an orientation and keep it. I'm trying to remember, wasn't there a place that had a compass? I guess we'll just consider this to be north. Okay, so north is that way. Yeah, so this is our orientation right here. Okay. So our cart is still over here. Another log cabin, good. Everyone is housed. And in the cart still has... Ah, oh, that's right. Tools and clothing. The one that we always forget. So we've got to deal with these guys. Uh, coats and tools. A little bit of ore left in there. And the rest of the potatoes. To be mixed in with what's in the storage... I lose it. There it is. Which is blueberries, ginger, wild seeds, roots, onions, and mushrooms. The last version of Colonial Charter also had wild corn, which always kind of seemed strange to me, especially the, the huge quantities that were being brought in. I mean, you didn't need to plant corn. It just came in uh, in abundance. So that seems to be gone now, or else it's in certain uh, forest types. But it's not in this forest. Anyway, with that, I see we're, we're kind of beyond a half hour at this point. We've still we've got housing for everybody. We've got food. Let's let the wood chopper finish up, and then we'll call this an episode. Next episode, we'll get into the tools and um, iron smelting. We got to get that going, and then we've got to get uh, clothing going and probably the beginnings of brickwork get the brick going and maybe glass over the next couple of episodes get all of our basic foundation going for the economy so we can start uh, building more interesting buildings more unique ones so we are woodcutter that's what we're doing need 24 logs we have 52 logs really where are they at okay we have builders we have laborers we, what, are just not prioritized? We're not prioritized. Even though that's on pause, they're still trying to build it, it looks like. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's say 
guys do this one let's see what happens zoom in here and yep they're bringing all the well, they're picking up the last of the supplies now we're dropping them off everything that's needed there's all the log uh, most of the stone a couple more we're good two out of three builders let's make it three out of three builders all right let's get this build no warnings up in here telling us that we've got hungry citizens or frozen citizens. So even though their house is cold, they're able to drop like this one just did. Drop in here, get uh, warm, and then take off again. So they're able to find a source of, of warmth. So turn that on. Let's take our builders down to, a, down to one. We've got our one hunter. Let's get two foresters and start filling all this in and then let's go ahead and queue up removal of all the rest of the iron and ore and notice how it says collect iron and ore there so it reminds you of what you're doing and we've got late winter going into spring so we've ended our first year i'm gonna go ahead and call this an episode next time we'll come in and start working on the tools and the clothing and and maybe the the clay, the, uh, definitely the iron, maybe the brickwork, but we'll save that for next time. So folks, I thank you for watching. This has been fun. This is going to be a great series. We'll have to figure out what our goals are and how far we're going to take it. I don't know if we're going to go for a population limit or if we're just going to have fun and just, just build. We'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.